This video will be about how we can configure a PDC Fly standard PDC controller to also include TriCaster switching. And it will also do something that many of you guys want, which is to take advantage of the advanced and deep configurations we have done already that allows you to so easily mix and match cameras, for instance, and then add something on top. So I'll show you how that can be done in the present state of Reactor. Now, keep in mind, Reactor, like any software, is in flux. We are developing it all the time, adding new features, fixing inconveniences that are there, and we'll also encounter a few of those today, which might not be there anymore when you're watching this video. But I'm excited to share this technology with you. I think we have come really far, and I am myself thrilled about what we are heading towards. So let's just create a new project here. We call it PDC Fly TriCaster, add it to the already long list of projects that I'm having. But keep in mind, inside of Reactor, on your blue pill, either blue pill servers or blue pill inside, you can have as many projects as you want, easily switch between them depending on your production needs any day. We'll add a panel, type up PDC Fly, there we go. And with this video, we will not have a physical panel, we'll just use the simulator. And for all practical purposes, the simulator is going to be just as good as having a real controller on your desk next to you. So that's also the case today. And by the way, pretty convenient when you do videos on a screencast. So we will uh, we added the PDC Fly now. We uh, want to add a few cameras, and uh, I think we may have some on the network. So I'll just do device discovery here. You can see how we could find cameras on our network. There's um, all sorts of cameras and devices that we could add up here. But let's uh, pick something which would be, uh, as an example, a, uh, a PDC camera. But I also want to, um, my go-to cameras are typically some Panasonic or uh, could also be Sony. Let's take some Sony camera. Uh, no, wait, we'll just add, add here by, by searching. I know we are doing the FR7, one of these new Sony cameras, pretty awesome, um, popular ones that was launched here in 2022, but it could also be a Panasonic. My point is that we are getting the ability so easily to do, just mix these together. If you hold down shift, you can add a few of those if you want. And then finally, of course, one of our new contenders in the class, the Canon cameras, which are pretty awesome as well. I really love the C300. We've used that in a few productions here in-house already. Now, there you go. We have now seven PDC cameras added to our PDC controller. And if, uh, if you want to know, uh, it's actually already here. If you pick these cameras in the simulated environment, you see that we have a PDC controller that is obviously responding to selecting a camera on the camera selector. And uh, on a PDC Fly, you have like paging buttons. If you press the sides of this four-way button down here, you're paging forth and back. You can access the, the last two cameras right here. So that's the standard PDC Fly demonstrated in a minute or two. So go back to the home screen. And uh, I'm now, now going to actually remove a few of these because this video is also, if you have a PDC Fly, you probably have few cameras. And we will just imagine we have four cameras today. So let's just check this out. If we go to the simulator, it means that we have one button left. And that button, I want that to be a cut button. So we'll now go into the menu again, because the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that we have the connection to the TriCaster. So we need to add a TriCaster. And the way to do that would be to add it as a device over here. So the ease of use or the convenience of adding from here when it comes to picking your switching system, TriCaster, ATEM, VMix, is that you need to add a device here. We will add it, TriCaster, pick TC2. Thank you. I know the IP address of that one. Uh, I think we'll have auto discovery at some point, but we are still waiting for having that come into the configuration. But you see that we are connecting to a TriCaster, and in fact, that TriCaster is available over here in a TeamViewer session. So uh, through this TeamViewer session, we can work with the TriCaster. You see it's dressed up as the VisaT brand that uh, it's called VisaT or Vis Vector, and, um, but it's a TriCaster. And um, therefore, it would work just the same if you had a TriCaster. So tally forwarding and routing triggers is the two things that we need to add now. Tally forwarding means that we can take tally out of the TriCaster forward to the cameras, but also use it on the buttons on the, the switches. So we'll just add that. So the first thing you'll do in here is to, to add one entry in the tally forwarding configuration, OK? So we are, we're now configuring. And you click here, you pick the TriCaster, and almost all information is filled out for you. But we also need to select which ME bus is it. It has to be bus number one. 
And that is known if you go into the parameter list of the TriCaster. I would love this to be a drop down. It will be a drop down one day. But right now, what I can tell you is that the information is implicitly known from going into the parameter list and knowing that this information is actually the layer reference and that is a number between one and six. And therefore, we need to pick one to get main. But that is like a little, I know this is annoying to see. It is going to be a drop down at some point, I'm pretty sure. But there was other priorities before that. So now I'm telling you, and this is one thing that you need to know apparently. So and another thing, and that should actually be considered before, is whether we want the um, the tally to we, we want it from an ME row, which is essentially saying, is it up, you know, sources on program and preview on the ME row, or if you want what is called global tally, which is like considering everything in the system and whether a source is on any ME and is on air. So there's some logic to what global tally means and. If we pick that instead, then that's that's what we're getting. But we'll just stick with the ME. We know this is the main bus. And we are actually, we should be ready to evaluate this. So if we go back to the simulator, we would lo love to see um, red and green indications here with the TriCaster. But we are apparently not. And even these two sources are number one and two. Ah, okay, that's the clue. Because the thing is, and I myself forget this quite often, that is because I, I kind of go down this list, I do routing triggers, and then I forget that in the camera selector, I need to tell Reactor which cameras are associated with the, which sources. So the four cameras I have, they are not necessarily camera 1, 2, 3, 4, or input 1, 2, 3, 4 on the TriCaster. They may be something else. And this is why, I mean, in, 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 this, in the most basic case, they would be. So you could just do this and then plus one all the way down and now you have it replicated. But what if this one would be input number seven? So for the, inf you know, for, for the sake of this demonstration, we'll just do that. But the tally index needs to be set. And then we can go to the simulator. And now you see something is working here. Now this of course doesn't matter, but it should in a moment. So if we just go over here and you see that I'm switching, yeah, these, right? So input number one, input number two, we made that seven. So that would be this one. Yeah. Input number three, input number four. So it does work. That's really nice. The same with the tally. There we go. Okay. That was seven. Yes. Three, four. Okay. So it starts to make sense right now, right? The final thing we need to do to actually do switching when we press the button, we want to also change the source on the TriCaster. That's the routing trigger because it is routing a source somewhere. Now, once again, you have a lot of flexibility here because you need to pick what device that you have added to Reactor is it that you want to, to do this function. And that's going to be the TriCaster. So once again, you pick that. Now, let's just for once look at what options we have. We can either do this to program. OK, let's stick with that and then see ME bus is probably the same. So that's going to be on the main bus. Let's try the simulate out and then let's have also TriCaster up here next to. Now I just remember I am making the same mistake as before. I have not told the system reactor that I want a specific camera to be a specific source on the switch. So I need to go back to the camera selector and I need to insert a number in the routing trigger. Let's just do the same number, right? So we'll just do this so that they are synchronous. It makes sense that it should be since we're using TriCaster for both. And now I dare to go back to the simulator and test this out. So are you ready? We'll just click number one and we route the program. We do number two and that gets input seven, three and four. So it works. But final step would be to have this done by preview and then we need to add a cut button and we are done. So we'll just go back to home and then all we need to do is to say, yeah, the routing trigger is not supposed to go with the program row on the TriCaster. It needs to go with the preview row. Now, now we are looking at this. I just want to point your attention to the fact that it could just as well have been routing something on an ATEM switcher or a vMix system or a Blackmagic Video Hub or a AJA Kumo router. And that makes a lot of sense because sometimes a preview monitor for a PTC operator would not be coming out of the switcher system. It could be a video router somewhere. So we have a ton of these profiles and we are adding more. But right now we're just picking preview. So that change is all we need. We can go back to the simulator. And now as we are pressing these buttons, it is the preview that we're changing around. Let's add that cut button now. That's really what we need. And now we get into configuring and some a little bit of quirkiness. But so far we have been managing the whole thing from the home screen. And this is 
basically what our vision is that many of our installations can be done by adding cameras, adding your forwarding routing triggers and setting up those things all in the home screen. You don't need to worry about anything else. And we are breaking out features there. You see other videos where you have other options hidden behind these blue buttons. But today we need to, to, to make a little hack. So we need to go to the configuration tab, which is a place that notoriously are freaking people out. Because the, the configuration tab gives you a view straight into the machine room of Reactor. It is a layer structure so deep that you easily get lost and confused. Let, let's just try to press one of these buttons here. If we have this, I think, listening mode associated with it, or this one, you see, woo! Okay, there we see suddenly uh, we are thrown into something. We're not entirely sure what this is. And that might freak you out, but um, uh, do not fear. And then let's let's focus on something else. So now follow me on this. What we will do on this one, let's just collapse as much as we can of this. Let's press this button to create a new layer. And we call it switching functions. This is just a name that we pick. All right. And now we have this new layer up here. On that layer, we can override any functionality on our controller as we want. So what I do now is I hold down my shift key and I do something strange. I highlight these two and I right click on this one. I don't think I can right click on this one, but I right click on this one and create behavior. So what I do now is, oh, I need to pick a layer to proceed. Okay, I'll do so. I'll pick that layer because I want it up on that layer. I right click, create behavior and I accept what it's asking me now. And now you see that we have two new behaviors created for this and this button over here. So the one called A6, I need to remove that again. So far, what I've said the last 30 seconds is like a hack because I, for technical reasons, could not do this on A5 alone. And that is a limitation that I think is gonna be gone in the future. I consider this not just an inconvenience, but probably a misconception in how the current interaction is. Because if you press this button, it would go straight into some other place in the structure. You can see what happens if I press this one, I get this weird thing. So what is that? And uh, if I right click on it, I can't even right click on it. So I'm, I'm afraid that uh, for whatever reason, this would be, this, this had to be difficult. But now we're here, A5 is our, uh, our behavior on this button and it fills it in with the dummy behavior. On this one, we'll just, um, no, wait. So what we do now is we search for the parameter that we want to attach to this. And that is the take function from the TriCaster. So we go to, we have, we have selected this by either clicking here or here, and then we press edit. And then you, ah, you can see that now we have all our devices up here. We can pick any of these devices and apparently we'll just pick the TriCaster. And now we have a parameter name. And you could search for cut, but you won't find anything because on TriCaster it's called take. So I'll just pick take and then I can choose a layer. Now that's the drop down we want to see, right? That's exactly what we were talking about out in, in the home screen. So it will come one day and uh, it's, it's the main that we need to take. I don't think that we need to uh, select. Yeah, well, we do. It will be background. So there's like two parameters to the take, you know, two additional parameters, we call them dimensions that we need to set for the parameter take submit. And it now seems to show us that. And it has picked a so called behavior, which is the trigger. And that's actually all fine. Just go with the defaults. I want to see if this works on a very basic level. So I'm going back to the simulator. And let's just pull up the TriCaster as well here. And see if we can confirm that this is working. So let's just check once again. Yeah, we can do all our preview routing. What happens if I press here? It is actually taking. So that's your cut button right there. Okay, guys, that actually worked. So we're almost there because the last thing I want to do is to go into the configuration tab and change the label of this one because it picked up something that was not so user friendly to me. It may be correct that, yeah, we are taking on layer one or whatever. But if I click this guy, I can show more and then I can open default feedback, and then I can change the title. Instead of push turn, it should say,
transition maybe, because that's the sort of transition that I'm making. And now it says transition. Okay, that's nice. Text line, same thing. Let's just remove that automatically inserted one and type in take exclamation mark. So this is how easy it would be to do that. I could even add a special color if I want it to be in a special color. And we have now all this in our configuration and it would do the take on the TriCaster. So this is how we can override a standard configuration on a PDC fly with an additional behavior. And you could in fact do that for basically anything on the PDC fly. It would be far more complicated if you want these to be conditional. That means hide them away in, in case certain things is true and so on. That's for a different video. Now I just wanted to show you a quick hack on how you can build on an existing configuration and then you can still say, okay, I don't need that button. I don't use this function. And you can slap something on top of it by creating a layer, overlaying it with the behavior for that one and be successful in making this merge, this fusion of uh, or, uh, you know, standard configurations and customization.